Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Nathan. Uh, as you just heard, my name is Brian, uh, Brian Johnston. Uh, I am one of the deputy directors here at the Angel Campus, and I'm just going to spend some time with you this morning talking a little bit about our entry requirements for A-levels and our pathways. So if we get started then, and if we can move to the next slide. Uh, entry requirements for A-levels. I want to talk a little bit uh, to begin with about our general entry requirements. So if you are looking uh, to choose a pathway uh, which includes three A-levels, we're going to be looking for a minimum of five GCSEs at grade nine to four, which include a GCSE English and Maths. If you're thinking you want to study four A-levels with us, we'd be looking for a minimum of seven GCSEs at grade seven. And within that, two of those need to be at uh, grade eight. And we'd be uh, expecting you to be part of our new scholars program. And that's something my colleague Joe will talk us through in more detail a little bit later on. Uh, and that is our kind of general entry requirements. But in addition to this, each of our A-level subjects has its own entry requirements. Uh, and these are available on the website for you to view. And these are just to ensure that students are suitable uh, for the courses uh, that they're interested in studying. So if we can move to the next slide, please. I just want to talk through a couple of examples, really. So if you're looking to study A-level chemistry with us, uh, we'd be looking for a grade five in GCSE English language, uh, a grade six or above uh, in GCSE maths, and a double six in the combined sciences. If we're looking at A-level English literature, we'd be looking for a grade five and one grade six uh, in written subjects at GCSE. And you can see there on the screen all of the different subjects uh, that uh, we uh, include in our written subjects for our entry requirements. Uh, and as I said, if we just move to the next slide, all of our entry requirements can be viewed at the college website. As Nathan has said, uh, we are really proud of our wide range of A-level subjects that we offer here at the campus. We've got some really popular courses in the sciences, social sciences, psychology, sociology, criminology, all incredibly popular courses here at Angel. We're also really proud of our extensive performing and visual arts offer, so uh, a massive range of courses for our applicants to choose from. And we acknowledge that such a wide range of subjects can sometimes be overwhelming. So we know that it's really important that when you're studying A-levels, you're choosing subjects that are not only uh, subjects that you have a lot of interest in, uh, that you're bringing to us from GCSE, uh, but they are focused towards your career ambitions, because that's essentially what we are doing here uh, as a, an A-level provider. We're getting you to your, your next steps. Uh, and to do that, um, we have placed our A-levels under career pathways, and they fall into two groups. Uh, we have a series of pathways under uh, a STEAM uh, branch of pathways, so uh, science, technology, maths uh, subject areas, and we also have a humanities and arts pathway. If we start by looking at the STEAM pathways that you can see on screen, uh, we have a medical pathway, a general science pathway, engineering, sports and business. And if we move to the next slide to have a look at our humanities and arts pathways, you can see that we have world studies, creative industries, performing arts, law and humanities, and the social sciences. So what does this mean? If we take an example and we look at our law and humanities pathway, we would expect students enrolling onto a law and humanities pathway to be progressing into a degree within the humanities or looking to study law at degree level. So there are a wide range of subjects which we would recommend that you take to get to your desired destination. So we know that universities will be looking for subjects like economics, maybe English literature and language, English literature, geography, history, philosophy, politics. Um, so we are telling you that this is what universities will be looking for and this is what they would be expecting to see in your UCAS application. There'd also be a, a number of other courses that you could potentially choose from. If we're thinking about our medical pathway, we also know that there are subjects that universities will be expecting to see from you. So medical for, uh, pathway, for example, if you want to go into to medicine, uh, universities will be expecting students to come to them with biology and with chemistry. Uh, so we say that if you are following a medical pathway, uh, those subjects would be mandatory. So on our pathways that are clearly listed on our website, 
you will be able to see the courses that are mandatory for, for those particular pathways and subjects that we would recommend. Uh, so when you're making your application uh, to come and study with us here at City in Islington, uh, we would invite you uh, to our website to look through those pathways, thinking about your next steps, where you want to go after A-level study, uh, and using those to inform your applications. So Matt, uh, that's kind of what I want to say about pathways. I don't know if we've got any questions coming through. We do have some questions. Thank you, Brian, for that. That was very interesting. So there is um, there's a question about uh, how many days does a student spend on site normally, uh, an A-level student when studying A-levels? OK, thanks, Matt. Really good question. Um, I would say that typically our, our students uh, work to a, a four day timetable normally with um, with A levels. Uh, if you think that you're doing three A levels, each A level has uh, four and a half hours contact time per week. You'd have your tutorial, you'd have your enrichment, uh, uh, you might have support workshops in there. And usually we balance that across a four day period uh, to give uh, students uh, study time. Uh, there's lots of additional work that comes with A-level study, uh, so we would be expecting students to make use of that study time in our uh, college library using our facilities. Having said that, it is also possible that students might be on a five day timetable. I know our A-level math students, for example, have three separate maths uh, lessons uh, throughout the course of the week. And sometimes that means that we're working to a five day timetable. Um, but if we remember A-level students are full time students, uh, so you know that that's not unusual really for students to be working to a four or five day timetable. 